Right, before I jump into this, let's just very quickly go and take a look at LogPoint. We, this is up on LogPoint's website, logpoint.com. These are the applications that we currently support. Our customers may choose to install it. You may not choose to install it. If you're not running anything that needs it, don't bother. If you are, absolutely go ahead and install it. For example, one here, the ADFS. Clicking on that gives me a quick explanation. This allows you to leverage Active Directory to log into a LogPoint system. So you don't need to create additional users, create a security group, align that, and then everybody can log in. So that's a pretty simple one. You, things do get more complex. When we take a look at LogPoint's SAP module, this allows you to actually, this allows us to go and communicate with an SAP system. In this case, I've got normalizers, dashboard packages, search packages, more normalization packages, so compiled and normalization packages, all the way through to really we have to enhance that data that comes in. If you are running, if you are running SAP, the, a lot of the logs can be very cryptic. The configuration is extremely cryptic. We need to get that in a, in a method that we can sort of align that along with a threat intel frameworks to bring that pertinent information right to the customer so they can understand exactly what's going on, leveraging you know, everything they need to inside of their log point. So what we do, we go, let's go straight down in our configuration, and then we have system settings. In system settings, we have our, our little tab at the end here called applications. You click on applications, and we show you all the applications that are currently installed and deployed in this current installation of LogPoint. Uh, apologies, my video's in the way here at the bottom, but there are 10 pages of bits of information here. There's a SIFS fetcher, big IP, CyberArk. So what we have at LogPoint as well, up on our log site, up on our um, website, docs.logpoint.com, you're going to see here we have our bundled applications. So these are all the bundled applications broken down into various categories. So we have plugins consisting of certain elements. And then scrolling on down, you've got your bundled SA applications and so on and so forth. Scro just scrolling back to the top to go and have a look at this. If we wanted to jump into, for example, the ODBC fetcher, let's go and take a look at the ODBC fetcher. <coughs> Very similar to the screen I just showed you, this allows you to fetch logs from different database servers. The application supports MySQL, MSQL, and Postgres, right? Coming inside here, giving you a brief explanation of how it works, how to install it, how to verify it, and there's documentation that you can download above for this respective item as well. So the, the last point I wanted to touch on was inside our SOAR implementation. So let's go back inside my settings for SOAR. In SOAR, we support slightly different products and vendors in SOAR because now we need to actually talk to an EDR device or talk to a remote device. Potentially, I can talk to Cisco and shut down a router, right? I can execute those commands if it is so configured. So we have vendors, products, and actions, right? Those are the key three that we want to talk about. I've showed some of this already before, but just to jump in here briefly, when I look at my products, if I just type in Cisco and search on Cisco, you'll see Cisco email security, Cisco firepower, Cisco IC. So these are all the technologies that we work with. And you can see <clears throat> the action count, how many actions can we request within the specific product line to go and perform. You know, it's not everything. It's only things that we necessarily need for a security operations and automation response function.